Okay, so before actually writing some code, uh, training like GBM, let's uh, discuss main implementations of uh, gradient boosting of this uh, very nice idea. Uh, and uh, we share some nice links here in Topic 10 article. So if you go to Kaggle, uh, you can find a lot of material about XGBoost, about LightGBM. Uh, so we're not repeating it uh, here, uh, but we'll take a look at practice, how you actually work uh, with LightGBM. Uh, but still some words about the history of uh, XGBoost and other implementations. So. Uh, here, introduction to boosted trees is a part of uh, XGBoost uh, uh, documentation. So if you want to, to know what's the difference, uh, you can go through uh, for this article. So, you know, uh, it's uh, a part of uh, documentation, but still it's very, very well written with all these nice pictures. Uh, so the, the basic ideas of uh, XGBoost are uh, nicely explained here. Uh, just a couple of words. Uh, uh, the objective is uh, a bit different for XGBoost. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so the objective will include partial derivatives of loss function, uh, so the first derivative and the second. So, uh, decision trees in XGBoost uh, do not uh, uh, minimize some criterion as we discussed as uh, information gain or entropy. So XGBoost provides some nice heuristic for, for a loss function and it also provides some heuristics for uh, regular, regularization. Yep, so the model complexity in XGBoost is controlled by uh, some more hyperparameters. So uh, we've got gamma which controls the number of uh, leaves. So uh, big T here is the number of total leaves in all trees. And uh, to reduce model complexity, uh, hyperparameter gamma is introduced, which is uh, tuned via cross-validation. And the second part is uh, uh, typical L2 regularization. In each leaf we've got uh, instances with their weights, and then we, as usual, we sum up all these weights with uh, squares, so all these weights squared, and we introduce L2 uh, penalty for these weights, and uh, the second regularization parameter is uh, lambda. So it's uh, some very nice uh, derivations. I really encourage you to go and uh, to walk th through this derivation. So uh, in the end, it turns out that this gamma arises uh, in this uh, splitting criterion. So remember, uh, for uh, basic decision trees, we calculated some criterion for the left-hand side. Uh, then the same for right uh, hand side. And then we uh, uh, compared it to the initial value of, uh, uh, of our criterion, and this this is how we define gain. So uh, gain for XGBoost is defined in a similar way, uh, only that the criterion differs here. So I'm not going through this derivation, but uh, uh, G and H uh, these include partial derivatives of the loss function. Uh, the first derivative and the second one. And here this lambda turns out to, to go to, to actually influence this criterion. And uh, a very nice thing is that uh, uh, gamma is also included in, into this gain. And uh, uh, trees in XGBoost are sort of regularized uh, just during training. So uh, this gain is calculated, so the value of criterion for left hand side in the tree uh, for the right hand side then minus the previous value and then it's compared actually with gamma so if it's uh, greater than gamma then split is good enough and it's done and if it's uh, less than gamma then split is not done and that that's how we uh, actually control the tree tree growth just in the same process just while building this tree so this is a very nice feature. So we regular, regularize trees just in the process of growing. So you see we've got these two hyperparameters, lambda and gamma, which arise uh, in, a, in actually splitting criterion. Uh, so XGBoost is basically uh, the same gradient boosting, but with some nice heuristics like that. And they turned out to work really nice in practice. 
and uh, XG Boost gained huge popularity uh, on Kaggle. Just in practice, it showed, demonstrated that it it works very well. And uh, uh, so I think this library was written in 2014, and uh, in 2016 uh, it it became really famous uh, on Kaggle. Uh, now. Uh, there are three uh, nice implementations of gradient boosting. So apart from XGBoost, uh, we also have uh, LightGBM and uh, CatBoost. Uh, so this nice article on uh, uh, towards data science in, a, in this blog compares these three implementations. A couple of words about uh, two more implementations, LightGBM and CatBoost. So I really encourage you to read this article, but I I'll underline some key differences. So LightGBM is a, a library written by Microsoft. Uh, it's uh, really well implemented. So if uh, when in XGBoost we have a mixture of a uh, lot of programming languages and it's uh, really hard to actually um, adapt your, this code uh, for your own purposes. Uh, Microsoft wrote all the implementation in C++ and it's uh, on average, uh, order of magnitude faster than XGBoost. Well, it depends on the task. Maybe on average, uh, three, four times faster, but still it's, uh, it's much faster than XGBoost. And in LightGBM, they uh, propose uh, uh, a new way to account for instance weights. So remember, in AdaBoost, we discussed uh, instance weights. In gradient boost, uh, boosting, they sort of disappeared. Uh, but uh, LightGBM uh, provides a new insight into these uh, instance weights. They propose what, what they call gradient-based one-site sampling. Uh, the idea is that you, you define uh, instances as uh, important ones in terms of their uh, gradients. So if a gradient for an instance is large, then, then it means that uh, this instance is sort of important if it influences the loss function very much. And so uh, for LightGBM, they propose to, uh, to, to actually calculate loss function based on some uh, proportion of uh, weights which, uh, which influence loss function very much. So uh, for instance, if, uh, if we have half a million rows, then we'll uh, estimate uh, the gradient uh, with some 10k most important. Uh, uh, instances, yep, so instances with the uh, highest value of gradient. And then from remaining uh, 490k uh, rows, uh, they just propose to, to sample all other uh, instances. So let's say we're going to estimate gradient not with the whole uh, one million in, uh, half a million instances, which is going to be pretty slow, but we take 10k most uh, important uh, instances with high values of gradient and then just sample uh, remaining let's say 10% so some 50 uh, 59k uh, weights with the uh, so we sample instances with less gradient weight okay so crucial two points are that we we don't estimate gradient with respect to whole data set which is going to be slow and we subsample uh, instances with high values of gradient, which makes it really very fast. So currently, if you go to Kaggle competitions, so most probably you'll find uh, kernels with LightGBM. So it turns out to, to work pretty much the same in practice as XGBoost, but a bit faster. Uh, in case where you have lots of categorical variables, uh, you'd better go to CatBoost. Uh, CatBoost is a, a library uh, developed by Yandex, uh, Russian Google, sort of. And it was uh, uh, open sourced in April last year, 2017. Uh, so it was designed specifically to work uh, nicely with uh, categorical variables. Uh, so just go through this simple explanation. It shows you uh, how they calculate mean targets. Uh, I will address you to this specialization, uh, advanced machine learning, it's, uh, let me check, it's by Higher School of Economics, 
uh, Russian University and uh, maybe Yandex itself. Uh, let me just check. Okay, strange. Okay, maybe maybe HSE. Well, uh, definitely it sounds like uh, an advertisement because uh, the specialization is is not free. But I uh, I do it lightheartedly because these guys which we can find here are all Kaggle experts. They mostly they are members of ODS AI, and uh, this course actually teaches you a lot of Kaggle tricks and hacks. Uh, let's take a look at instructors. Okay, so Dmitry Lyanov, Michael Trofimov, uh, Alexander Gushin, uh, Dmitry Althoff, they're all Kaggle masters. You can easily find them on top of Kaggle leaderboard. Uh, this guy, Marius Michelidis, uh, is known as Casanova, uh, also a very, very famous Kaggler. So you can learn all these Kaggle tricks from first hand. And uh, they also describe uh, a technique called mean target encoding. Uh, so uh, let me just illustrate the main idea, uh, and I'll, at some point I'll stop. Uh, and uh, all the actually technical details would better be covered in, in, in that course, uh, how to win a uh, Kaggle competition. The basic idea of mean target encoding. Is to, is to calculate average values of your target for some values of categorical variable. So uh, suppose you've got uh, some categorical variable, uh, let's say a city, uh, and maybe you've got New York in your data set, uh, Moscow, Amsterdam, uh, Paris, and so on. Uh, first, you'll check how many unique values for this categorical variable you've got. So, if it's uh, five or seven, uh, then you'll, you, you'd better go for one-hot encoding. Yep, so we know a technique called one-hot encoding for categorical variables. It's pretty simple, you just build uh, features like city equal New York, city equal uh, Moscow, and so on. So, we know one-hot encoding. But suppose the number of uh, unique values for this variable city uh, is something large, uh, let's say 10,000. So maybe you're not going to apply one hot encoding for such large number of categorical variables, of actually unique values for this categorical variable. Because remember, when we have too, too many features, then gradient boosting will not work uh, that, that well, because it's based on decision trees. And for decision trees, we already discussed that. So if you have uh, a categorical variable with a large number of unique values, uh, maybe we can introduce uh, something else. Uh, so for, for training set, we, we also have a target variable. Maybe we are solving some uh, binary classification problem, uh, predicting customer churn, and so we'll have zeros and ones. So what we can do, we can actually substitute uh, this variable uh, city with, with some uh, numeric variable, and we can calculate uh, proportions uh, of, uh, uh, let's say it's, okay, for simplicity, let's say it's churn, uh, we are going to predict churn, and let's calculate average rates of churn for different cities. Yep, so if we just do a group by, we can calculate such a dictionary uh, that Uh, let's say in our uh, dataset we've got a mean target, uh, so average value of target uh, 017, meaning that uh, there's 17% of uh, churned customers in our database. But we can calculate the same for different values of city. So for New York maybe it's uh, 12%, for Moscow maybe 16 and so on. Amsterdam let's say 20, and so on. So we, we can calculate such a dictionary. And so these values will be called mean targets. Uh, 
Okay? Uh, and then we just substitute this uh, variable city with just mean targets according to this uh, dictionary. So our new variable uh, city Okay, CT2, but we mean that uh, it's a mean target. Okay, so we just place these uh, mean targets instead of cities. 012, 016, 02, 009, something like that, and so on. Well, this is not that simple. You are going to, to do it really very, very, very carefully. Because you uh, introduce uh, some information from your target variable. Yep, so we've calculated this means according to our target variable and it's very, very prone to overfitting. Uh, so, uh, you see, if we incorporate some knowledge from target uh, variable to our features, then we very, very easily overfit. So, uh, there are some tricks how to avoid it. Uh, and so these are covered in this uh, course by top calculators. Uh, the basic one is to calculate this dictionary in out of fold manner. So this is the basic principle to, to calculate almost any feature that it's uh, prone to overfitting. OOF means out of fold. So it's a general technique uh, to build uh, certain types of features and uh, the same for uh, mean target encoding. So you do cross validation. Uh, so let's say you've got again this, uh, sorry, this variable city and your target. Okay, and here you'll have these uh, I'll call it mean target for city. You do, uh, you perform cross validation, let's say three fold. Uh, and so you, uh, to actually calculate uh, values of this mean target variable uh, for the first one third of our data set, we'll uh, calculate statistics uh, only on two thirds. So we'll take two thirds of our cities, the second one third and the th third one, and uh, we'll calculate this dictionary. So from city to mean target. And then, uh, so we, we've calculated uh, this dictionary on two thirds, and then we'll apply it here to, to build this mean target feature. So now we just fill in these variables according to, to this dictionary. On the third iteration, uh, the same, but uh, for different folds. So then uh, to, to calculate values of this feature for the second part, we'll uh, calculate the dictionary on other two thirds of our data set. So we'll have a different dictionary of the same type. And then we'll fill in values here and so on. So this is the basic idea in, uh, in such a way you are less prone to overfitting because at least uh, to build such feature, you don't use the same values in the same rows. Uh, and uh, what, what most important is th this fact that uh, to calculate some value from here, we didn't use target. You see, to calculate this value of mean target for city, we didn't uh, incorporate uh, at least uh, the answer for the very same instance in our data set. And that's why it's less prone to overfitting. So CatBoost implements nicely some uh, tricks uh, actually from Kaggle experience. Uh, so they calculate the same uh, in a bit uh, different way. Uh, but the idea is basically the same. So it turns out that uh, uh, 
CatBoost can work better with categorical variables. So the author of this uh, article provides some, some benchmarks, uh, but I would also recommend more thorough benchmarking. So uh, some archive papers. One is also done by uh, H2O, uh, a very fa famous company. Well, so uh, basically the results of this benchmarking uh, say that uh, there's no too much difference between three algorithms, XGBoost, CatBoost, and LightGBM, in terms of uh, performance. But uh, these benchmarks study utilization of uh, GPUs to actually accelerate uh, uh, boosting. Uh, they conclude that uh, it uh, accelerates uh, nicely CatBoost and uh, XGBoost. They also conclude that uh, indeed uh, LightGBM uh, is uh, faster than XGBoost, but overall in terms of um, speed and accuracy and ability to uh, support GPUs, there is no 100% winner uh, between these three algorithms. Okay, so again I encourage you to, to study some links from here to understand these differences uh, between three implementations uh, and let's go and apply one of these algorithms to some data set. Okay, we'll take a Kaggle Forest cover type prediction task. Uh, so it's one of Kaggle competitions, maybe it's now archived. Um, let's take a look. Well, the task is uh, not very vital, not definitely not a business task, but I'll just show the techniques how you train uh, gradient boosting and how I typically approach such problems. Okay, so we're going to predict the forest cover type based on some uh, cartographic features. So these are seven types of uh, forest. Of, well, I don't know this, uh, maybe I'll only recognize cottonwood and willow. Uh, okay, so seven types of forest and they are predicted with uh, different features like elevation in meters, it's uh, uh, how far uh, is this forest higher than uh, world ocean level. Then some uh, azimuth, some slopes, uh, distances to uh, closest water, uh, hill shades, uh, indexes, uh, as far as I understand, uh, the length of uh, of the shade uh, at different times of the day, uh, different types of soils, uh, one hot encoded feature. Okay, so honestly I'm not going to go deeply through uh, into, in, into data, here I'll just show the technique how you actually approach this problem. Okay, so we read the data. It's convenient to do uh, such computations as Kaggle kernels because you can actually add data. So uh, here to the right we've got this add data button and we can search for the data, data set that we are interested in. Uh, so here we can type forest cover type and actually add, add data from this source. So I've already added it here. Uh, and so it's somewhere here. Input forest cover type, and we read training and test data sets. Okay, so if we read the first row, then we see all these features elevation, aspect, slope, and all, then one hot encoded types of soil. Okay, so some 50 features, not uh, that much. It's already a first sign that maybe you'll try uh, decision trees or random forest or boosting here because the number of features is not is not that high. Let's see the target distribution. We see it's perfectly balanced. Uh, the equal number of values for every class. Uh, we'll perform train test split. And uh, as for me, I uh, always uh, al almost always uh, try logistic regression and, and random forest uh, to see how they perform. So we'll define a simple pipeline uh, 
which will include a standard scalar and logistic regression. Uh, so we're not going to play with hyperparameters. Uh, that's why I love logistic regression and random forest, that I, they are not very sensitive to hyperparameters. So we'll just set a default regular, regularization. We'll pick up uh, LBFJS solver, which is going to be the fastest. What I've noticed for logistic regression in new versions, so they have default number of iterations equal to 100. Uh, maybe you'd better increase it because it's not always converges. And we'll pass a parameter multinomial for multi multi class uh, logistic regression. Okay, and so it's going to, to fit pretty quickly. Well, some uh, warnings that we, we had int values, now they are converted to float by standard scalar. Well, it's not really that important. Okay, so and in several seconds we'll get accuracy around 70%. Uh, 70%. Then what I do, I just try random forest uh, classifier with the same data. So we'll uh, pick 100 trees, train random forest, it's done very quickly for this data set. Whoa, and we've got 86 uh, accuracy on our holdout set. So it's much higher as compared to 70 for logistic regression. This is uh, definitely a sign that maybe we'd go for gradient boosting and we'll, uh, we'll have a, a bit higher accuracy uh, when we see that uh, actually trees work uh, better for, for this problem uh, than logistic reg regression. Meanwhile, we can estimate feature importance done by random forest. Anyways, we see that uh, this elevation feature is the most important one. So actually, how high is the forest as compared to world ocean level? Uh, this influences uh, the forest cover type the most. Okay, and now we uh, will try LightGBM classifier. So in Kaggle kernels, you don't need to do anything. Uh, if you do it locally, you need to install it. Uh, so it's LightGBM, so from LightGBM we Im import uh, LGBM classifier. Well, it stands for Light uh, Gradient Boosting Model. Okay, so uh, for now we'll just uh, set random state and uh, try it out of the box. And I'll quickly explain what are the main uh, hyperparameters here and uh, how we actually tune them. So. Uh, for large datasets, it's going to work much faster than random forest. Uh, for, for this small dataset, we, we won't see any difference. Uh, but the, uh, the key uh, difference is, is that uh, gradient boosting has a lot of parameters to, to tune. And uh, that's why if you tune it, you can actually have higher performance than, uh, so higher accuracy than for random forest. Okay, so for random forest we had some uh, 86 point something. If we train uh, gradient boosting out of the box, we've got uh, 85, uh, a bit less. But now we'll tune uh, hyperparameters here. Uh, and uh, for gradient boosting, uh, the perfect scheme would, will be to tune, uh, to do this um, cross validation uh, and grid search uh, two stage. So at first stage we'll, we'll tune uh, all these hyperparameters that uh, stand for modal complexity. So for this example, I only pick number of leaves and max depth. Uh, but if you want to tune uh, regularization, it will also go here. Yep, so all the parameters that stand for mod modal complexity, including regularization, you first tune them here. In this example, I show only max depth and number of leaves. Uh, but if you go to Kaggle kernels, uh, you can easily find uh, a lot of uh, examples of tuning LightGBM. You can do it a bit smarter without grid search, but with random search or some Bayesian optimization uh, algorithms. Uh, but the idea is still the same. Yep. So this will be the first stage of uh, hyperparam tuning, and it's. Uh, tuning uh, modal complexity. Okay, uh, number of leaves for uh, LightGBM, 
uh, shall be uh, less than 2 to the power of depth, minus 1. That's why here I enumerate uh, 2 to the number of 3 minus 1, equal, which equals 7, and then uh, actually powers of 2 uh, minus 1. Okay, so if I do grid search, which took a bit more than one minute, I defined uh, best uh, hyperparameters. Well, in this case, it decided not to restrict max depth and uh, put number of leaves uh, uh, equaling 63. Actually, this is uh, not a good sign. So if uh, an optimal value is somewhere in the, on the border of uh, uh, actually the range that we, we tried, it's not a good sign, so maybe if we increase number of leaves, the performance will be better. You can try to do to do so. And on, via, via cross-validation, we had some uh, comparable accuracy, uh, but on the holdout set, we we get slightly slightly higher accuracy. And then we do more tuning. In this case, it took a bit more time, and I commented it. So uh, the basic idea is that uh, the first stage. Um, of hyperparam tuning. Uh, it's about uh, actually convergence. The main principle is that uh, if you lower your learning rate uh, and increase the number of iterations, uh, you, you'll have uh, a, a better convergence and uh, hence a better accuracy. So basically the idea is that you, you set the number of iterations as high as you can afford it, uh, maybe a thousand or three three thousand. In this case, not to wait long, I set uh, two hundred as opposed to one hundred uh, as a default value. And then for this number of iterations, you just tune learning rate. Yep. So the idea is that if you do a lot, a lot of iterations with an infinitesimally small learning rate, so your your convergence will be perfect. So that's why you uh, set the maximal number of iterations that, that you can allow, un unless so until you are bored with tuning hyperparams. Uh, so I've defined a new LightGBM classifier with uh, the values of max depth and number of leaves from the previous step. So these are tuned, and I set this number of estimators. And now I do in another grid search, actually tuning only learning rate uh, for. Uh, for this number of iterations. So I think it took some five or six uh, minutes and uh, then I defined uh, the best value of learning rate and for uh, okay I think I yeah it's not not good that I don't print, print accuracy here uh, but it's Again, it's slightly higher than in previous case, some 86.5. Uh, okay, now we can uh, uh, actually fix this as a final model, final LightGBM, and train it on the whole uh, training set, make a prediction for the whole test set, and uh, actually make a submission. Well, in this competition, test set is much, much larger than the training set, and that's why we see some drop in accuracy. But you can experiment more, experiment with uh, logistic regression, random forest, and actually make sub submissions uh, with these models to actually find this uh, evidence that tuning hyperparameters actually worked. Well, for LightGBM, we'll have another feature importance estimation. It can differ from uh, the one by random forest, and we can't do anything about it. It's just a heuristics. Uh, well, again, all uh, main features are still almost the same, maybe in slightly different uh, order. Well, there are a lot of memes about tuning XGBoost for Kaggle competitions, so, but, uh, so you can easily find a lot of information uh, on Kaggle, uh, in Kaggle kernels, uh, maybe in Kaggle Learn as well. Uh, but the basics are the same, that you do two-stage uh, hyperparameter tuning. So the first one is responsible for modal complexity, and the second one is actually uh, responsible for convergence. 
With a large number of iterations and with appropriate learning rate, you find better convergence, and that's why better, better accuracy. So, in a nutshell, this is the idea of uh, hyperparameter tuning for uh, gradient boosting. Maybe it's a bit uh, annoying, uh, so as compared to random forest, which works almost perfectly uh, out of the box. But still, uh, with this, you can uh, actually uh, you can tune your hyperparameters uh, once, maybe in a month, in a real-world task. But then your gradient boosting will probably work uh, faster and a bit better than random forest. And now for uh, home assignment, uh, you go to ML course AI assignment. So number 10 is uh, about flight delays prediction. Uh, and uh, okay, just go and apply uh, gradient boosting or any other model. Uh, so in this assignment, uh, the baseline is uh, actually pretty simple and it's not really challenging to, to beat it. So currently it's somewhere on the 53rd position. Uh, this baseline we got it actually with uh, light GBM. Uh, so this, a couple of words about this task. So there are a lot of uh, categorical variables. So we predict uh, flight delays with such categorical variables as month, day of month, uh, uh, unique carrier, it's a code of a company who actually performs this flight. Then some cities, origin and destination of a flight. And the target variable is uh, whether the flight was, the, whether the departure was delayed for 15 minutes or, or more. So it's again a binary classification task. So we see a lot of uh, categorical variables. So maybe you can try uh, how LightGBM uh, handles categorical variables. It's also discussed in this article on towards data science. And maybe you can also try cat boost here, just practice a bit. Uh, yep, so uh, there's a full paragraph on how uh, cat boost treats categorical variables. We already discussed a bit mean target. LightGBM provides some uh, another heuristic for categorical variables, so just try it out whether it works. Xboost doesn't provide any nice way to work with categorical variables, so you just need to perform it on your own, like whether you, you would perform one hot encoding or some other technique. Uh, XGBoost just doesn't provide anything. So go and, and work with it. Uh, maybe you'll find CatBoost working here, maybe LightGBM. Maybe you come up with nice feature representation and you can easily beat provided baselines with XGBoost or even with uh, logistic regression. Okay, so actually that's it. Finally, I would uh, say that we host all uh, materials uh, as Kaggle kernels here as well. It's, it's convenient. Uh, as, as you see, you don't need to install different libraries like LightGBM or CatBoost. They are already there. Uh, so just go and uh, use it uh, interactively, all these kernels. I would really appreciate you to upvote this dataset. So, it, uh, so if you go to Kaggle datasets, you'll find these data set much higher in, in ranking. So this will attract more students to our course. And the same for kernels. So we got all of these materials in, interactively. So, well, uh, maybe it's a bit messy here, but if you go to data, uh, to overview of this data set, so we'll, we provide each article as a Kaggle kernel, uh, which is sort of nice that you can play around and uh, well, experiment with different techniques like uh, hyperparameter tuning and, and so on. Well, and definitely if you upvote uh, these kernels as well, it's, it will also only help. Uh, so here we have, uh, uh, maybe you can sort it with, by votes itself. So you see, we, we have also demo assignments here. Apart, apart from topics, we've got all these uh, demo assignments. Uh, so when we don't launch our course, uh, you can easily practice with uh, these demo assignments and we also have solutions to them uh, right here in just as Kaggle kernels. Okay, so actually 
that's it. Uh, good luck. And uh, after this course, uh, I would recommend actually uh, trying uh, participating in uh, Kaggle competitions. Uh, so if you don't pick images or voice or big, big collections of texts, so most probably you'll deal with tabular data and uh, you'll get this practice using uh, actually gradient boosting. And uh, further, further, I'll do a small uh, outro, uh, some a couple of words, what you can do when you finished the course and how you can actually develop Either you can study neural nets or theoretical machine learning or how you build a better career or uh, maybe you're mostly interested in implementing algorithms. Okay, some of, some of these topics I'll cover in an, uh, sort of an final words and outroduction. Okay, good luck.